Hi everyone, this is Matt from Mokenfilts. In today's instructional video, we're going to show you how to modify your lead CNC. This is really exciting because we've increased our Z height drastically, so now we can accept up to 8 inches of material, which is super exciting. As long as you have a longer bit on there, the sky's the limit with this machine. So what we've done is we've utilized 500 millimeter V-slot on both wide gantries, which gives you this increased height. We've also used a thousand millimeter C-beam here with an additional X carriage to increase the rigidity and strength of the system. And let me tell you, this machine is stout and strong. Super exciting. We're looking forward to showing you this modification. Super easy. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for the first step of this modification, what we need to do is disassemble some of these components so we can allow for the new modification to take its place. So what I've gathered here is some of the tools that I'm gonna be using for this mod. I have my ball driver set, I've got some snips, and my power drill. So that's pretty much all we need throughout this process. So to get started first, we're gonna focus on the Z-axis here. For this modification, we're gonna to increase to a 500 millimeter C-beam actuator. So what we need to do is simply just take off this third plate, so what we have here is what I like to call a triple plate configuration. So you have two extra large plates with wheels in between, and then you have the third which is attached to that config, and it's attached to your 250 millimeter C-beam. So what we're gonna do is turn our attention to that extra large plate, and we're gonna take off four screws and take that whole assembly off. So on the left side of this extra large plate, you'll see two screws. We're simply going to take these off, And we're going to do the same thing on the right side of that plate. Just kind of hold on to that router spindle mount because this is going to try to come loose. So I'm just grabbing the router spindle and that should come right off. So on this actuator, you'll see that we have our wires attached to the back end of the CB min mount. So we're just going to go ahead and loosen that. And up at the top, you'll see that we have our connectors zip tied. I'm going to take some snips and just snap that. That way I can just unplug this just like so. So now I'm just going to set this actuator right in front of the x-axis C-beam for now. Okay, so this is what you should see so far. We have our Z-axis disassembled from the X-carriage. So now what we need to do is go ahead and take off some of the electrical components that are attached to the C-axis because we're gonna be utilizing most of these parts besides the lead screw and of course the C-beam. And we're going to use these same parts on the 500 millimeter C-beam. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and turn this to the micro limit switch side. So you see your micro limit switch here. And we're gonna go ahead and take that off. And I'm gonna pop that slot cover as well, just like so. And of course the LED light ring, we want to loosen those two screws and pull that wire loose. Now next, since most of us are going to have our router installed still, we need to go ahead and loosen that router spindle mount. And we're going to take the router out. And what I'm going to do is try to work around a lot of this, um, this wiring, just because we already have it ran through the drag chain. Instead of uh, disassembling the drag chain and going through the whole process of rewiring, it's actually easier just to keep some of this stuff attached. So like the wiring, we're just gonna keep that to the side and just work around that. Okay, next we're gonna take off the router spindle mount here. Just like so. And try to keep all these parts organized. Right now I'm just kinda laying them onto my work surface and I'll organize these a little bit later. But each one of the screws that are used for this assembly, we'll definitely want to keep to the side because we'll be reusing those. Okay, so now that we have our Z-axis detached from our system, like I said, I'm just gonna keep some of this stuff over to the side for now. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step of the disassembly. Okay, for this next step, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble our X-axis C-beam so it's a pretty simple process. Basically what we have here is joining components on each side of the C-beam. So that's the 90 degree joining plates as well as the cast corner connectors. 
So what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn our attention here to the left side and start disassembling some of these components. So just to keep in mind, I have my, my tools set out here, my ball drivers, uh, some snips, and of course my power drill. So let's go ahead and turn our attention over here to the left side of the machine. Okay, so we're gonna start off first by just loosening this micro limit switch and getting that out of the way. You see we have drop-in T-nut, so it's pretty easy just to loosen that up and remove it. Next, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to this nine degree joining plate. There's two self-tapping screws that we're gonna remove, and that pretty much holds this joining plate to your X-axis C-beam. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and take my power drill and loosen up these two screws. And once again, make sure to keep your parts organized. We will be reusing a lot of these parts. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and remove these cast corner connectors. What I mean by remove is we're actually just gonna be loosening these screws and sliding them down. That way we can have access to these once we add our modification. So what I have here is some slot covers on the front end. These are just kind of for aesthetics. I'm just gonna take a flathead and pop these out. That way I can slide these cast corners freely. Okay, so now that we have the slot covers out of the way, I'm gonna come in here and loosen each one of these screws, and that's tied into the actual C-beam. And these are all T-nuts, so they're gonna stay in place. The ones on the left side are gonna be drop-in T-nuts, so just be careful you don't loosen those too much because they will come loose. All right, so I have all those screws loosened. I'm gonna come in here and loosen up those drop-in T-nuts. And what we're looking for is that sliding motion here. So we're just gonna slide these on down, keep them in the track. It just really helps with the uh, modification. So you don't have to go through and insert T-nuts again. You see, I'm just loosening all these and sliding them right down. It's a pretty easy process. All right, so now we have this side complete and we have one more cast corner here at the bottom. I'm gonna leave that attached that way this whole system doesn't fall over once I disassemble the right side. So just keep that one attached for now and we'll work, we'll work our way back to that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and move to the right side now. Okay, so just like the left side, we're gonna loosen our two self-tapping screws here first. Remember to hang on to those parts. All right, next, I'm gonna move to the cast corners just like we did the left side. Okay, so now that we have those cast corners loosened and out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to that cast corner here behind the C-beam. Okay, so here on the back end of the 20 by 80 and the C-beam, there's a cast corner there. And the drop-in T-nuts that are used, so we're simply just gonna loosen each one of those screws and pull this out of place. And just make sure you hang on to this piece of C-beam because it's gonna move. And what we're gonna do is just keep it here for now because we have one more piece that we need to pay attention to which is that double L bracket that's attached to our drag chain. So you can see it's right here. We're gonna loosen those two screws. And now that we have that removed, we don't have to worry about any interference here with our wiring. So we can actually just set this to the side. And let's go ahead and move to the left side and do the same exact thing to that cast corner. All right, once again, we're just gonna loosen that top screw. And once you have that loosened, you should be able to pull this to the side. All right, so just make sure you hang on to these cast corners. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and remove our Y-axis gantry plates. So on each side, you'll see that we have the sandwich configuration attached to your 250 20 by 80 V slot rail. So what we need to do is take off our C-beam end mounts, some of the lead screw components, and we're going to take some of the framing components off as well so we can lift the system up slightly and pull our gantry plates out. So we're gonna start over here on the right side first. You can see I have my ball driver set here handy. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here on the right side, I'm gonna go ahead and take my micro limit switch off real quick. And what I'm gonna do is 
loosen each one of these pin connectors. That way I'm able to slide this through without any interference with this connector. So taking a flat head, I'm just going to loosen each one of these and pull it out. Just like so. Make sure to hang on to it. We're going to be using it once we reinstall the mod. Okay, so now that we have the micro limit switch out of the way, what we're going to do is take off the C-beam end mount. So we have here is four screws that are holding this into place. Now one suggestion for these screws in particular, they're 20 mil screws and they're specific for mounting the C-beam end mount. So what I like to do is just keep the parts with this actual plate. So if you have like a, a plastic bag or something like that, you can keep your uh, parts organized. Because once we go through the reassembly, I'm going to be calling off the sizes of each screw. So if you don't have a way to measure these, which you can measure them with a tape measure, it's pretty easy, or uh, a reference scale then I would just keep those parts with the uh, existing plates because it just really helps for the reassembly. So I'm just going to keep these with my C-beam end mount. All right, and uh, this bearing came off. We need to loosen up this lock collar. And in between the lock collar and the bearing, of course, we have our shim. So this is the 8 millimeter shim. So we're going to keep all these components together as well. Okay, so now we need to work on the framing side. So underneath your Y-axis C-beam, you're going to have two cast corners underneath and we're going to loosen those that way we can lift this system up and we can slide our gantry plate out so what i'm going to do here is just slide my system forward and hang it off the edge slightly that way i can have access to these cast corner connectors okay so we're going to be taking these screws out completely because these are standard t-nuts that are in these uh these framing sides of the machine. Okay, so now that I have these cast corners loosened, what I'm going to do is just leave these hanging there because, of course, we're going to reattach the system. So just kind of leave those dangling and that'll be fine. All we want is that movement here so we can get our gantry plate out. So basically, we can just slide this to the side and we can just simply take our gantry plate off. Okay, so now that we're in position, like I said before, we're simply going to slide the C-beam to the side. And what I'm going to do is just grab this lead screw, and I'm just going to turn it to the right, and slide this gantry plate right out. So once you have the Y carriage pulled loose, this is what you should see. And the reason we're doing this is because we have our T-nuts attached to the 250 C-beam for extra rigidity. So we need these out so we can access both sets. So we have one up top here and then the other down below here. So that's kind of the idea behind this. All right, so we'll go ahead and put this to the side. Once again, just make sure you're keeping your screws organized. I can't stress that enough. So these screws came off of the cast corner connectors. So if need be, just label some bags or some notations or something like that. But, you know, you just want to make sure you can keep everything organized. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next side. Okay, so once again, we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process. Taking off the CB min mount, our lead screw components, loosening those cast corners. We're going to slide this system off and remove our Y carriage. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got my screws my C-beam end mount, and that's the bearing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that. I'm gonna keep all these organized together. All right, and we have our lead screw here. So we just need to loosen that block collar. All right, and also the eight millimeter shim. So we're gonna keep these parts together. All right, now let's go ahead and move to the cast corners, which are underneath the C-beam. So again, we're gonna take the screws out that are attached to the C-beam. All right, and we'll keep these parts together as well. And like I said, if you need to label these as cast corner uh, connections, just uh, label that. I'm just gonna keep these with my C-beam and other components. All right, once again, we need to loosen this end. We're not gonna take those screws out completely. We're just gonna loosen the cast corner so they can hang and we can shift this system to the side to remove our carriage plate. So I'm just kind of pulling this system out so I can have access. 
All right, and once those cast corners are freed, just kind of shift them in a downward position so you can move this C-beam freely. So once again, we're gonna shift this system to the side here. And using our lead screw, we're just gonna rotate and remove this carriage system. All right, and that's another Y carriage down. So let's go ahead and put that with the other. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, since we already have our Y-axis carriages disassembled and placed here right in front of us, what we're gonna do is disassemble these, slide them out, so we have T-nuts on the back end of the extra large plate as well as these cast corners keeping this in place. And what we're gonna do is take our additional 20 by 80, 500 millimeter V-slot and slide these into place. So that's gonna grow this system and it's part of the modification. So go ahead and grab your two 20 by 80, 500 millimeter V-slot and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and take off of these end caps here. So I'm just gonna use my power drill and we're gonna add these to our 500 millimeter V-slot. So you can just put these to the side. And the same for our additional. All right, once that's complete, the next thing I'm gonna do is loosen each one of these screws that are attaching these cast corners. I'm not gonna take them off completely, just gonna loosen them. And I'll show you why in just a minute. This really helps for this assembly. All right, so you should have plenty of play there with your cast corners. Now, from the back end, you'll see that we have two screws, one on top and then we have these on the bottom. So we have access holes here on each side. We're going to use those to loosen the screws. Once again, we're not gonna take these out. Just like so. And now you'll see that your 250 20 by 80 is loose. So what we're gonna do is just slide this on out, just like so and put that to the side. And let's go ahead and grab our 500 millimeter V-slot. And what we're gonna do is slide this right back into place. So just kind of manipulate the T-nuts so they can accept this. One thing that I like to do with these cast corners is I'll actually screw down this into the extra large plate. That way I can just slide my 20 by 80 right into the position. Just like so. I'm just gonna go ahead and prep the T-nuts. Okay, so I'm just sliding this on down and we'll reach the next set of cast corners here. Okay, so once you have all the T-nuts slid through the tracks, you can see you just really have to manipulate the cast corners. They have slotted holes here, so they move back and forth. So you can tighten them into position, just align those T-nuts. And that's just one way to do this. On the second gantry system, I'll show you the other way which you might find one way easier than the other. So that's why I'll show you uh, the different ways that you can assemble this. So next what we need to do is just make sure that this is on a flat surface. We want this to be completely square to our extra large plate. This is very important for this system because it needs to be square. So what I do is I find a flat surface here. So our spoiler has been surfaced. So I know that it's, it's completely flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around so I can access my T-nuts first. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with these top two T-nuts. Just like so. And then go ahead and do the bottom T-nuts as well. And you'll see that I'm completely square here with my extra large plate. So that's exactly what you want. You don't want it tilted or anything like that. So now that you have your T-nuts mounted to the back end of this 20 by 80, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and start with this side first, I'm just gonna tighten down my cast corners to reinforce the rigidity of the system. Just like that. So now we have our 500 millimeter Y-axis gantry and that looks great. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to our next gantry plate. So on this gantry plate, what I'm gonna do is Go ahead and take these cast corners off completely. I'm gonna show you the other way to assemble this. 
you might find one way easier than the other. Just take this cast corners out. All right, so now that we have the cast corners off of the system, once again, we're gonna loosen these screws. We're gonna keep the T-nuts attached because trust me, it's way easier to slide the piece of V-slot in than it is to try to realign those. So with those T-nuts loosened, we're gonna take the 250 out. We're gonna go ahead and slide our 500 in. So now we only have four T-nuts that we're working with here, which is much easier. So I'll just get those T-nuts straight. And slide it on down to the bottom sets of T-nuts here. Just like so. Once again, we're gonna make sure that that's flush against our flat surface so we know that our spoiler board is flat. If you need to find a level or something like that to ensure that, I would go ahead and do so. This is a very important part of the step. I want our system to be square. All right, so that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount these T-nuts. I've got the top done, working on the bottom now. Once again, taking a look at the bottom here, that's completely square with my extra large plate. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our cast corners and we're gonna slide these into the tracks or 20 by 80 and align it with the holes here on the extra large plate so you'll see your threaded holes on the extra large plate that's where I'm aligning this and I'm going to tighten it down to this 20 by 80 and then add my additional 8 millimeter screw to the extra large plate all right taking one of the 8 millimeter screws let's go ahead and fasten that into place all right, we're going to do the same process for each side. So, like I said, I like to slide this into place first, tighten that down. Just like so. You see that I'm aligned here, so I'm going to insert the 8mm screw next. Okay, so that should be the end result. And one thing you can do is just make sure that you have all these cast corners tight. So just go around, make sure that those are snug. All right, so we have our two Y-axis gantries complete. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and take our Y-axis gantry assemblies and we're going to attach them to our Y-axis C-beams on both sides. So. To go ahead and get started, let's go ahead and move to the right side. We're going to take one of our assemblies. So again, these are going to be oriented like so. So the lead screw is going to attach to our nut blocks. So this one will be for our right side. So let's go ahead and move over here to the right side. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and push the C-beam out to the right. Give us room to push our gantry back onto the C-beam making sure that your lead screw is aligned with the nut block. We're first gonna go ahead and screw the lead screw right into this nut block. So it's gonna go ahead and rotate that until it catches. So once it catches, I'm just gonna continue to rotate it. And it's literally gonna pull the gantry towards the Y-axis C-beam. So once again, I'm gonna align the second nut block here. And once you have it in place, just going to grab the end of the lead screw and continue to push this down slightly. And the reason for doing so is we need to mount our Y-axis micro limit switch as well as putting our framing components back to the C-beam. Okay, so now that we have this one into position, what we're going to do next is go ahead and attach our lead screw components. So we have our lock collar, the 8 millimeter shim, and the eight millimeter bearing. So slide those components in and take the C-beam end mount. And we're going to attach this to the system because this is not only going to enclose the lead screw, but it's also gonna give us our measurement here that we need for our frame. So make sure that the recessed side is facing the bearing and make sure you take your 20 millimeter screws and insert those back into the holes here. 
All right, taking my ball driver, I'm just going to fasten these into place. All right, and then uh, turning the attention to the lock collar over here, what I'm going to do is seat the bearing. You'll hear it snap into place. And holding firmly against that lock collar, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. All right, you shouldn't have any movement here in the lead screw. That looks good. Okay, so next we need to go ahead and access underneath. We're going to go ahead and attach our frame to the C-beam here on the Y-axis. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull this system out to give us access to underneath the machine. Okay, so remember we set our parts off to the side. So we're going to reattach these 8 millimeter screws back to our cast corners and the T-nuts that are underneath. So we never took those T-nuts out. And the reason for doing so is so we could just reattach these cast corners without any interference. So what I'm going to be doing now is just realigning those T-nuts and then attaching the screws. And once I have connection with the T-nut, I'm going to make sure to orient the position here right before our end caps. So the end of the V-slot is where the C-beam end mount should lay flush. So now go ahead and tighten that into place. and then tighten down your additional screw. All right, so that's one down. Let's go ahead and move to the second. All right, that's perfect. So now we have our cast corners in place. That frame is sturdy. So let's go ahead and move on to the next side. Okay, so taking our next Y-axis gantry assembly, once again, make sure that it's oriented in the right position. Once again, we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did with our right Y-axis assembly. Just go ahead and get that lead screw started into the nut block. All right, now I got it on there well enough so I can just go ahead and continue turning the lead screw just to push this gantry a little bit further. I wanna have access to this framing components. Okay, so that looks good. We have our Y-axis carriage in place. So now we need to do is just go ahead and put our lead screw components back onto the lead screw, reattach our C-beam end mount, and then we'll move on to remounting our cast corners to the C-beam. So first starting with the lock collar, eight millimeter shim, and your bearing. Go ahead and seat those into place. And go ahead and take your C-beam end mount, making sure that recessed side is facing the bearing. We're going to take our 20 millimeter screws and put those into position. All right, now taking my ball driver, I'm just going to go ahead and mount this into place. All right, and once you have the C-beam end mount mounted, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the lock collar and go ahead and put those components into place. All right, sliding these down. So again, we're going to seat that bearing into the C-beam end mount, holding firmly on that lock collar. Let's go ahead and tighten it down. Just make sure that you don't have any play in that lead screw. That looks really good. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the framing components. Once again, we're going to take our eight millimeter screws from underneath and mount to those T-nuts that are left here into the C-beam. So just like we did the right side, we're going to make sure that we align our C-beam to the edge of the V-slot, not the end cap, the V-slot. So right before the end cap, we're going to align our C-beam end mount. And from there, we're going to position our cast corners to mount to the C-beam. So just like so, I'm going to align that T-nut in there and then mount that into place. All right, so now that I have that screw attached to the C-beam, I'm going to attach to the 20 by 40 frame. All right, and the same process for our additional cast corner. All right, now that's solid. Okay, so we have that connection established. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our X-axis C-beam to our Y gantry plates. So as you can see here, I have my Y gantry plates moved to the front. I wanna ensure that my system is completely square. So that's a good place to start. Basically all you do is rotate your lead screw until you're maxed out at your position here. That'll keep your gantry plates in position while we attach our X-axis C-beam. So another thing to consider as well is you're probably gonna need a ladder depending on how tall your table is. 
So um, I've grabbed a little step ladder I'm going to use and I'm going to bring the system up and then attach it to the Y axis C beams. So let's go ahead and get started. So taking my X axis C beam here, I'm going to go ahead and lift it up and holding firmly, I'm going to go ahead and attach this one side first. And then the second, and these are all the self-tapping screws that we used for our previous system. So that's one side down. Let's move to the right side. So over here on the right side, I'm simply going to align this 90 degree joining plate with the extrusion, put in my self-tappers. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this into place. Okay, so now that we have our 90 degree joining plates in place here, our next portion of this step is to get each end cap on top of the 20 by 80 extrusion. So the end caps that we had left over from our previous system, we're just going to go ahead and reapply to each side. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, that's the left side down. Let's move to the right side. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is attach our cast corners back to this system. So we're going to start here with the left side first, shifting all these down, reattaching the drop-in T-nut side first, and then tightening down the regular standard T-nuts. So let's go ahead and focus here on the left side first. So sliding this cast corner down, go ahead and tighten that drop-in T-nut. You'll feel it grab and you won't have any movement here, so that's how you know you're attached. And then tighten down the standard T-nut. All right, so that completes the left side. So let's go ahead and move to the right side. Once again, we're just gonna slide these down, tighten up the drop-in T-nut side first, and then tighten down that standard T-nut. All right, now that we have the right side complete, Next, we're going to go ahead and put our additional cast corners behind the C-beam and reattach it to our 20 by 80. So let's go ahead and grab those pieces now. It should be the cast corner with your two screws and drop-in T-nuts attached. And let's start here with our right side first. All right, so starting with the top slot, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down first. And then on the bottom slot, go ahead and tighten that one down. All right, so that's the right side complete. Let's go ahead and move to the left side. All right, same process. We'll start with the top first. All right, so that completes the left side. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to go ahead and disassemble our Z-axis here. So this is for our standard lead, which is 250 millimeters. So the additional components that we're going to require is our 500 millimeter C-beam, as well as a 500 millimeter lead screw as well. So the additional parts here that you see laid out, these are all from your existing lead. So we have a router spindle mount, our four 12 millimeter screws, and of course the Z-axis actuator. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the first part of the step, we're just gonna go ahead and focus on disassembling the Z-axis here. So starting off, taking the C-beam end mounts off, we're just gonna go ahead and loosen each one of these screws. We're going to try to organize all these parts because they're also going to be attached to our 500 millimeter C-beam. So let's loosen these screws first. Okay, so that's one C-beam end mount. And you'll see your additional components here that are attached to the lead screw. We're going to take those off as well. So just loosen that lock collar. All right, and next I'm just gonna go ahead and take the gantry cart off of this Z-axis. And also any slot covers that are left behind. So you can see I'm just rotating the coupling here and this gantry plate will come right off. All right, we'll set this to the side. Next, we're going to go ahead and take off our motor. So on the flexible coupling, you'll see your additional screws. We're going to go ahead and loosen those. All 
All right, and for the motor, you'll see your 40 millimeter spacers and your two 55 millimeter screws. I'm just gonna leave those attached to the motor and put that with our gantry plate. And the additional screw here that's attached to the lead screw, we're gonna go ahead and loosen that to get the coupling off. Just like so, put that to the side as well. And let's take the C-beam end mount off. All right, and I'm just keeping this with my additional C-beam end mount. Push that bearing through, just like so. And we'll keep these parts over here to the left. Once again, we're gonna loosen that lock collar up and the eight millimeter shim, and keep those with the lead screw components. And as far as this 250 millimeter C-beam and lead screw, you can just put this to the side, use it for another build. It's completely up to you. Okay, so bringing our focus over here to our 500 millimeter C-beam, what we need to do is attach our Z-axis gantry plate to our router spindle mount. So since this configuration is going to be different, this side of the C-beam is actually going to be facing us. So the gantry is going to move up and down from here, and that way we have extended length and travel for our Z-axis. So what I'm going to do is take off these two black angle quarter connectors, and we'll keep these to the side. And on the bottom end, I'm just going to leave these attached. You see some drop-in T-nuts. What we're going to do is just take the drop-in T-nuts off. And once again, we'll just put these to the side. Now let's go ahead and take our Z-axis gantry plate. So what we're going to do is use these bottom holes here. Since the plate's going to be riding up and down the Z-axis like so, we have our centric side and we have our fixed side. What we need to do is align the router spindle mount with these holes here for a strong sturdy mounting configuration. So taking my router spindle mount, I'm going to align this into position and using the screws here on the bottom of my black angle corner connectors, I'm going to attach those to these threaded holes here on the, the Z-axis carriage plate. So this is an extra large gantry plate and it comes with these threaded holes. So we're gonna go ahead and attach those screws just to give us something to uh, hold this router spindle mount into place. So I'm not tightening down these screws completely because I want some mobility here so we can align the back end with these holes. So what you'll see is the back end of the router spindle mount will align with these four holes. So we have one here, 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 and on the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and take my four 12 millimeter screws we had left over from our old system. I'm going to run those right into those holes. All right, and let's go ahead and tighten those down. All right, and that should be the end result there. So now for the black angle corner connectors, we're gonna go ahead and tighten those down just for extra rigidity here, just like so. That looks great. So let's go ahead and move on to sliding this onto our 500 millimeter C-beam, just like so. Check those eccentrics, make sure that they're adjusted properly. The preload should still be activated here on the gantry plate because we did not mess with the eccentrics throughout this whole disassembly. So just make sure, mine feels really good, it's stiff, no movement or wobble. So next we're going to take our 500 millimeter lead screw and go ahead and run that through your anti-backlash nut block. So I'm just rotating to the right here and feeding this through. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and add our additional lead screw components. So we have our lock collar and eight millimeter shim. We're gonna go ahead and slide that into place along with our eight millimeter bearing. And uh, same for the other side here. Lock collar, eight millimeter shim. And your eight millimeter bearing. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and add our C-beam end mounts. So I'm gonna start with this side first from on the top end of this actuator. All right, and go ahead and tighten those down. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rotate the system and let's go ahead and attach our CV mem mount to this end. Once again, make sure that that recess side is facing in toward your bearing. All right, just like so. 
what I'm going to do is pull the lead screw back slightly. This needs to be flush with the CB min mount. And holding that into place, I'm going to go ahead and snap in my bearing and my lock collar. And just pressing firmly against that lock collar, go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, let's rotate the system around. We're going to do the same thing to the opposite end here. Snap that bearing into place. Pressing firmly against that lock collar, go ahead and tighten it down. And go ahead and test that lead screw for any type of movement. You shouldn't have any movement in that lead screw. If you do, just go ahead and loosen that lock collar, reseat it, maybe adjust the orientation against the lead screw pitch, and retighten it. You can see mine has no movement. That's what you want. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the mounting of the motor. So this is the top end of the actuator here. And you can tell because we have the lead screw sticking out of the front end. So that's going to attach to our coupling. So go ahead and take your coupling with your 8 millimeter side. It's going to attach to the lead screw. What I like to do is get it close to the C-beam end mount, but make sure that you have enough room so it's not rubbing. All right, and then I'm going to take uh, the coupling screw here and tighten that down completely. So what you should see is no gap. So you see I have a gap here. That clamp is completely seated to that lead screw. So that's perfect position right there. So next we're going to go ahead and take our motor and we're going to go ahead and take our 55 millimeter screws and 40 mil spacers. And we're going to orient this a little bit differently. Since this part of the actuator is going to be facing the front, we want our motor wires to be hanging off the back. So in order to do so, we're just going to basically change the slots that our screws go in. So I'm going into the bottom end here, just like so. I'm going to add my 40 mil spacers. And we're going to go ahead and align that to the C-beam end mount and make sure that your motor shaft inserts the flexible coupling. That's what you should see. And what I like to do is seat those screws first into the C-beam end mount. Just like so. Once again, those screws on the flexible coupling, we're going to go ahead and tighten down. Make sure you get your set screw as well. So your set screw is going to attach to that flat portion of your motor shaft. It's going to lock that into position. All right, so that was super easy. Now we have a 500 millimeter actuator that we're going to use for our Z-axis. Double check all your components, make sure that they're tight, especially that lead screw. Make sure you don't have any play in that lead screw. I mean, this system's built for accuracy, so you just want to make sure that the mechanical side of this is done correctly. All right, so we have our Z-axis actuator complete. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to go ahead and attach our Z-axis to our X carriage. So let's go ahead and gather these parts. So what we have here besides our Z-axis, we have four black angle corner connectors, which two of these you can use from your existing system since the router spindle mount was attached to the back end of the C-beam before we used four black angle corner connectors. On this system, we're only utilizing two. So I just dragged two more from the existing system. And then you're gonna need two additional black angle corner connectors, a total of eight drop-in T-nuts, two of which came from the existing system. And then we have eight M5 eight millimeter screws and four M5 12 millimeter screws. So that's all we will need for this mounting process. Just make sure you get those parts together and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna start with here is the black angle corner connectors. Each one of these black angle corner connectors is gonna to attach to our second slot on the C-beam. And this is gonna be part of our mounting configuration to our X carriage plate. So on this bottom track on each side, we're gonna insert two of our black angle corner connectors. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. We're gonna use our eight millimeter screws and drop in T-nuts. What I like to do is just thread on that drop in T-nut, just like so. And from there, you just wanna make sure that your black angle corner connector is oriented like I have it here, so it can mount to the extra large plate. So I'm just gonna mount one here. And of course, this position is gonna change. We want to align it to the holes that are attached to the extra large plate. So I've got one on there. Let's go ahead and do the second. So it'll be two per side. Okay, so that's one side done. Let's go ahead and do the second side.
All right, so that completes the black angle corner connector assembly to our Z axis. So now what we're gonna do is move up to our X carriage and we're gonna set up some of these screws so they can mount to the back of the C beam. So we'll have four additional drop in T nuts that we're gonna use with our four M5 12 millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so taking the 12 millimeter screws, what I'm gonna do is insert those in the top two holes of the gantry plate. And there's an access hole in the back too, so you can access these screws with your ball driver. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert these screws now. And then holding on to the back of the screw here, I'm gonna go ahead and tie on these drop-in T-nuts just for convenience of the assembly. Same for the second here. All right, and same for the bottom two holes here. They're gonna match what we have here on top. Just go ahead and insert that screw on both sides. And then tie on your drop-in T-nuts. What I like to do is just keep these uh, drop-in T-nuts as straight as possible so they can be inserted into the track of the C-beam. So next, let's go ahead and bring in our Z-axis and we're gonna go ahead and mount that to the front of this X carriage plate. Okay, so for this part of the process, what I'm doing is just bringing in the Z-axis. And if you have somebody that could help you out with this, it could uh, definitely help, but it's not difficult to do by yourself. You just might just need a, like a step ladder or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is just start here with the top two drop in T-nuts. I'm gonna line this up as best I can with the outer holes of the C-beam. And you'll feel it catch. So I just dropped it into place here. I'm gonna work on one side at a time. I have one side done, now I'm moving to the next. I'm not tightening these down completely. I want them just snug enough to where it's gonna hold this into place. But we also need to make sure that the system's square so just keep that in mind while you're tightening these down. So now I'm gonna work on the bottom. All right, so I have those nice and snug. My system's not going anywhere. Now we can focus our attention back to these black angle corner connectors, shift those into position, because those are gonna be mounting into the extra large plate where you see these threaded holes. So we have two on each side. So that's what we're gonna be using. So let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so focusing on one side at a time, I'm over here at the right side of the Z axis. So what I'm gonna do is just loosen this black angle corner connector here. I'm gonna shift it up towards this threaded hole. And if you need to move your gantry plate out of the way, you can always use the flexible coupling on the top of the Z axis. So I'm just gonna shift this out of the way real quick. And now I can align my black angle corner connector to the extra large plate using eight millimeter screws. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this into place. All right, same with the second one. Go ahead and move that into position. All right, so once you have those black angle corner connectors in position, what I like to do is come back here to the drop in T-nut side and just ensure that you have a lock here. This is all part of strengthening the system. So you really wanna make sure those drop in T-nuts are locked into place. I'm just gonna go back and make sure that these screws are tightened as well. And one thing that is really awesome about this modification is you can adjust this position of your Z axis. So all you have to do is loosen up these, these side screws here, the drop in T-nuts in the back, and you can actually bring the system down if you wanna do like a standard material, like a quarter inch material you can bring this whole system down to where it can accept that kind of material and you're not losing strength because we're gonna put in a cross member here that's actually going to increase the rigidity of the systems. And surprisingly enough, with just this standard uh, adjustment to the modification with the 500 millimeter 20 by 80, you still see a lot of strength, which is very impressive for this system. The only flex and compromise you might see is in the actual extrusion itself, but all the other components are solid. So you're pretty much tied onto the system at this point. And we're gonna add that additional C-beam just to strengthen the system even more. Okay, moving to the left side here, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this black angle corner connector as well. Basically, we're gonna do the same exact thing we did on the right side. So let's just go ahead and complete that. All right, just make sure all those screws are tightened down. And lastly, I'm gonna go behind and 
tighten up this drop in T-nuts that are attached to the back of the C-beam. Because now we have a square system here, you can always double check it with a speed square or with another gantry plate if you have it available. But pretty much the way that these holes are set up here on the back of the extra large plate, it ensures squareness. So we're good there. We're going to go ahead and tighten down those screws. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and take our router and we're going to go ahead and place it into this router spindle mount. I like to keep this cord facing to the right here and just bring that into position. What I like to do is I like to keep it at like a halfway point here just to make sure that it's stable. And we're going to tighten down one side at a time just to make sure we have a tight lock there in the router spindle mount. We don't want to over tighten this. Just make sure that it's nice and stiff. It's not going anywhere. All right, and that looks pretty good. So right now we're just gonna leave the micro limit switch off to the side and we'll get back to that. We're actually gonna mount that to the top of the Z axis. So don't concern yourself with that right now. We'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna be assembling our extra large gantry plates. So basically what we're gonna be doing is creating another X carriage to run along with our system to offer additional strength to the system. So what I have here is two extra large gantry plates I have a total of eight solid V wheels. I have one broken out here for you, so I'll show you the assembly process for the wheel. It's pretty simple. Also, these additional precision shims and things like that are all in the wheel kit. So I have eight precision shims, four nylon hex nuts, four centric spacers, four six millimeter aluminum spacers, four nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four slot washers, and four 65 millimeter screws. So that's all we'll need for this assembly. And of course our tooling will have the ball driver and spanner wrench. Okay, so getting started here, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the wheel assembly. So you have a shell here and we're gonna pop one of these bearings into the front face. You hear it snap. And we're gonna insert our precision shim in the middle of the wheel, just like so, and snap in that additional bearing. And it's that easy. So that's your wheel assembly. So we'll add that to the additional wheels that I already have assembled. So that's a total of eight wheels. Go ahead and start there and assemble your wheels. And let's go ahead and focus on the extra large gantry plates. So on the extra large gantry plate, we're gonna be using these four holes. So let's go ahead and insert the 65 millimeter screws into each one of these holes. Just like so. And what I like to do is place this plate on its back. And that way we can start our stacking configuration because these plates are gonna be sandwiched together. So starting with the fixed wheel side first, which is the smaller, smaller holes, you'll see the eccentric side is larger for the adjustment of the eccentrics. So we're gonna grab our six millimeter aluminum spacers and add that to each screw here on the fixed wheel side. And then add precision shims to each screw. And then add one of your extreme wheels. Next, we'll use the nine millimeter aluminum spacers in between each wheel. And go ahead and sandwich another extreme wheel on top. Add your precision shims next, followed by a six millimeter aluminum spacer. Just like so. So that's the fixed wheel side complete. Let's go ahead and move to the eccentric side. So you'll see that I have my eccentrics marked here. You'll see a six millimeter stamped side on the eccentric. That's a fully open position. So what I like to do is just mark those for reference. And we're going to keep those at a fully open position so we can adjust those later on to our C-beam. So this will be facing away from our fixed wheel side, so that's a fully open position. And you don't necessarily have to mark them as long as you can see that 6 millimeter sign. That's just an indication of the fully open position for this eccentric. Go ahead and add precision shims next. And once again with the eccentric spacers, you just want to make sure that that lipped end of the eccentric locks into the gantry plate so it'll seat flush and basically that hole is going to set in and you'll see just the outer end of the eccentric and let's go ahead and add the wheels next followed by our nine millimeter aluminum spacers add two more wheels our precision shims next and of course our eccentric spacers. Once again, make sure that these are fully open and that lipped end should be facing up. 
So that's going to lock into our additional gantry plate. Just like so. And from there, we're going to go ahead and stack on our additional extra large plate. Make sure that the eccentric side is with the eccentric side and the fixed sides with the fixed side. You should feel that snap into place as the centrics will set into the plate. And we're going to add our slot washers to each screw. And what I like to do is just thread on those nylon hex nuts. I'm going to tilt this to the side. And using my spanner wrench and ball driver, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this system down. Next, we're going to take a look at those eccentric spacers. I want to make sure that they're all fully open here so my adjustments can be consistent. So those two are fully open. Let's move over here to the left side. All right, and those are fully open. So that looks good. That's our gantry plate assembled. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our centrics for our X-axis carriage. So what I have here is a thousand millimeter C-beam. We have our carriage assembly. So what we're gonna be doing is just adjusting the centrics to make sure that we have the proper amount of preload to our extrusion here. And it's very important just for the rigidity and the accuracy of the system. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and slide this into place making sure that the eccentric side is facing down. So the way that this is going to lay is with this side facing forward. So we just want the centrics down at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this into place. And I already feel a little bit of preload here on the system, which is good. It's just gonna be easier to adjust. So what I'm gonna do is focus here on the eccentric side on one side at a time and just adjust those eccentrics until I feel the proper amount of preload. So preload is basically the friction that you have on the rail of the system. So if you're confused with that term, it's just the tension that's on the rail here. So just make sure that this, this system doesn't have any wobble. And that's another test too, is just to kind of move this back and forth. And right now I'm feeling some wobble, so I know that I need to adjust those eccentrics. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and do a 45 degree turns here on the eccentrics in a counterclockwise motion. And then I'm gonna do the same for the bottom, just to keep these consistent. And what I'm feeling for here is enough friction on the rail. So right now, as I'm trying to move this wheel, it's actually trying to move the gantry plate, so I know that I do have tension on the system. But when I feel the top wheel, right here, that's actually kind of loose. So I'm just gonna to continue to adjust this eccentric here. Get a little more tension onto that system. All right, let's see how that feels. Oh yeah, that's much better. So I'm holding the plate, but if I were to release it, it's gonna move on its own. So essentially what you're looking for is just that friction on the rail. And that looks good. And the second wheel as well, that looks really good. So I can adjust that one a little bit more. But when adjusting these eccentrics, you really want to just rely on your feel. Because what I like to do for the system in particular is I like a little more tension on the V slot. Some people like, you know, just enough friction to where it's rolling back and forth. These extreme wheels are pretty rigid, so I like to add a little tension just to make sure that this system isn't going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and test for preload. That actually feels pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and adjust these eccentrics here on the left side just to make sure. All right, once again, still kind of loose here on this left wheel. I'm going to continue to adjust that until I get that tension. That feels good. All right, let's feel the top two wheels. All right, so what I'm testing for is just that preload. And uh, once again, I just want the proper amount of tension to each wheel, so I try to keep it pretty consistent. So if one feels a little loose, just try to get it just right. But the main idea is just to make sure that you do have friction on your rail and there's no gantry movement. So if you feel that, that gantry plate against the rail, you shouldn't have any movement there. That feels really good. So our centrics are complete. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and attach some of our supporting components to this X carriage assembly. So what I have here is eight cast corner connectors 
have a total of eight M5 T-nuts, eight M5 10 millimeter screws, eight M5 eight millimeter screws, and eight drop-in T-nuts. So along with that, I'm just gonna have my ball driver here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started with this assembly. It's pretty simple. We're just gonna go ahead and take one of our cast corners. And what we have is two sides that are identical. We have these little feet that are attached to the cast corner. Now it's something to pay attention to because the way that the system is going to mount, some of the feet are going to reside inside the track, and then some are going to be on the outside, which is going to attach to our, our 20 by 80, 500 millimeter piece of V-slot. So the side that's going to be attaching to those 500 mil pieces is going to receive a 10 millimeter screw and a drop-in T-nut. So just remember, any side that you have a drop-in T-nut, just add that 10 millimeter screw. So right here I'm adding the drop-in T-nut. I'm just gonna thread that onto my 10 millimeter screw, just like so. And I'm gonna do that for all these cast corners. Okay, and then on the opposite end, that's gonna receive the eight millimeter screw with a regular standard T-nut. But before we do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide in these T-nuts into the track of the C-beam. So we're going to have one per track of the C-beam, making sure, of course, the flange side is facing down. And from there, I'm going to take my cast corner and orient it like so, so the drop-in T-nut can attach to our 500 mil V-slot. And take one of the 8 millimeter screws, and we're just going to tie these into place. What I like to do is just establish a connection here with the T-nut, the but I'm not going to tighten it down completely, just enough to where it'll stay put. So let's go ahead and do that for our additional cast corners. All right, so that completes this side. What I'm going to do is just rotate this around and do the opposite the same way. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and put these T-nuts into each slot of the C-beam. And taking one of the cast corners. Drop an 8mm screw in there and tie that onto the T nut. Slide it down. All right, so that completes that side. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to go ahead and start assembling our black angle corner connectors to our Z axis. So this is going to be the mounting process to hold this carriage into place. So what we're going to do is turn our attention to the Z-axis. We just need to go ahead and gather our parts. What we have here is four black angle corner connectors. We have a total of eight M5 8 millimeter screws and four drop-in T-nuts. Of course, I have my ball driver. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the Z-axis. Okay, so here at the left side of the Z-axis, what I'm going to do is take these black angle corner connectors with some drop-in T-nuts, and I'm going to go ahead and mount these into place on this back end of the C-beam. So you'll see your second track here. So Taking one of the black angle corner connectors and an 8 millimeter screw, I'm going to go ahead and prep this for this mounting config. So just like so, and then uh, go ahead and tie on one of those drop-in T-nuts. And the idea here is to do the same exact thing that we did with the top extra large gantry plate. So we have the two black angle corner connectors connecting our Z-axis. We can do the same exact thing for this additional C-beam. So make sure that it's oriented correctly. You want to make sure that this side is able to mount to the extra large gantry plate on our C-beam here. So I'm going to go ahead and just find a home for it for right now. Just tighten it down so it'll stay in place. And I'm going to do the same thing for one more of these black angle corner connectors for the side. Okay, and let's go ahead and move to the right side. We're going to do the same exact thing. All right, just like so. So now we have both of our black angle corner connectors on each side. So let's go ahead and bring in our C-beam. Now, one thing to pay attention to with the C-beam is you wanna make sure that your eccentric side here is facing down. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that system in just like that. And what I'm gonna do is just roll my gantry plate over so I can get an idea of where I need to be. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop this back down so what I need to do is loosen some of these black angle corner connectors so I can get a sturdy mount onto that extra large plate. 
So taking one of my eight millimeter screws, we're gonna go ahead and run it through this black angle corner connector and preparation. Once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just tighten down that drop and tee nut slightly. Okay, so that's one connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to the left side and establish a connection to that black angle corner connector. So bringing this black angle corner connector into position here, go ahead and tie on this eight millimeter screw. And now that I have it in place, simply loosening this screw here. What I'm looking for is a flush mount between both extra large plates. So essentially we're making like a double extra large plate and then go ahead and tighten that screw back down. So as you can see here in the midpoint, you'll see that my two extra large plates are kissing each other right here. That's exactly what we want. We want these to be lined up to ensure there's squareness in the system as well as just creating a really rigid system that's pretty much interconnected to travel along the X plane. So now that we have this situated into place, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the assembly with uh, the additional black angle corner connectors here. So I'm taking this eight mil screw, I'm gonna tie it into that threaded hole, the extra large plate. If you need to adjust the position, once again, all you have to do is loosen these screws here on the black angle corner connector and you can shift it freely. All right, and let's move to the right side. All right, so now our black angle corner connectors are installed and that's looking really sharp. So next, let's go ahead and focus on getting our C-beam square to the rest of our system. So on each end of the thousand millimeter C-beam we have here, we have our cast corners that are gonna be attaching to our Y gantries. So what we need to do is make sure that the C-beam's flush against the system like our top rail is. So let's go ahead and turn our attention here to the left side. So over here on the left side, you'll see that my C-beam isn't all the way across. So all I'm gonna do is just pull that to ensure that I do have a square mount. So it should be flush with the rail here. So go ahead and make that adjustment and then we'll go ahead and tighten down these cast corners to the system. Okay, so bringing these cast corners over, we're just gonna simply loosen the standard M5 T-nut. I'm gonna bring this over to the slot and I'm gonna tighten down the M5 T-nut side first. So once that side's tightened down, then just go ahead and tighten down your standard T-nut here. And we're gonna follow that same process for these additional three cast corners. Okay, so just make sure that those are nice and tight. And that looks great. Let's go ahead and move on to the right side next. All right, so that completes the right side. We're really starting to see a rigid platform here. This is looking great. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our cast corner connectors to reinforce our X-axis C-beam. So what I have here is four cast corners, four M5 10 millimeter screws, four M5 8 millimeter screws, four M5 T-nuts, four drop-in T-nuts. So what we're gonna do first is set up our drop-in T-nuts on these cast corners. So I'm gonna use eight millimeter screws because these feet are gonna be inside the track this time. And then tie on that drop-in T-nut, just like so. And let's go ahead and repeat that process for these additional three. Okay, so now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move our attention to these M5 T-nuts. We're going to be sliding these into the track of the C-beam. So we're going to have one on top, one on bottom. Let's go ahead and move to the left side first. So over here at the C-beam, we're going to go ahead and insert one of the T-nuts here on the top track. And then one more T-nut on the bottom track. So let's go ahead and bring in our cast corner connectors now. So these cast corners are simply going to be placed like so. We're going to tighten down that drop in T-nut first and then insert the 10 millimeter screw and tighten that down. All right, now that we have that drop in T-nut secured, let's grab a 10 millimeter screw. So what I like to do is just use an Allen key here so we can access the screw. We're gonna mount this into place. 
All right, just make sure that's nice and tight. And let's go ahead and move to the bottom section of the C-beam. Once again, we're gonna start with that drop-in T-nut first. Go ahead and fasten that into place. And then taking our 10 millimeter screw, we'll go ahead and mount to the standard T-nut. All right, so that's a sturdy mount right there. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing to the right side of the machine. So just like we did the other side, we're gonna insert those T-nuts first, one on top and one on the bottom. And taking one of our cast corners of the drop and T-nut attached, let's go ahead and mount that into place. All right, so now that we have those cast corners in place, using a 10 millimeter screw, we're gonna go ahead and mount to the standard T-nut in the bottom. Once again, for the top portion, I'm gonna use this Allen key so I can have access to the screw. All right, just make sure that's nice and tight. And let's go ahead and insert one of our 10 millimeter screws to the bottom. All right, now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this final step, we're going to be doing is just organizing all of our wires. What I have here is five zip ties, so we're going to, going to take the wire and uh, keep it organized, tie up some of our connectors for our motor, reestablish our connections to the LED light ring and our micro limit switch. So let's go ahead and get started here. So first off, I went ahead and reestablished the connection here to the LED light ring. So that's your positive on the right side, your negative on the left, and then of course the micro limit switch. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the right of the machine. So our micro limit switch, I've reestablished the connection here. So basically what you have is with the pins facing upright, you have black on the left side, red in the middle, blue on the right, so that's your signal. Then you're gonna reestablish that connection here to your micro limit switch and just reconnect that to the top slot here so the Y gantry plate interacts with the micro limit switch. Pretty easy. And then over here by our drag chain, what I've done with the double L bracket is actually mounted it vertically so you can see that my drag chain is upright and the reason for doing so is so we can st still have a decent amount of length here to work with on our system so instead of rewiring we're able to work around that and configure this into a vertical configuration so that turned out really nice so all you have to do is just tie in this drop in t-nuts and mount that into place and then at the top of the z-axis i went ahead and mounted the micro limit switch so now we're going to have interaction with the wheels on the gantry plate of the z-axis. We'll go ahead and bring this upright. So once it comes up to an upright position, it'll interact with the micro limit switch. And that's precisely what we want. Now for the rest of the system, what I did is I took the corrugated tubing off of these wires. So we have additional length here that's available. And we actually need access to that length. So instead of mounting that corrugated tubing here on the z-axis, we're actually gonna just zip tie these wires together. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and come in here with uh, some of our zip ties. So taking some of these wires, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a bundle going here. And once again, I don't wanna interfere with the length that we need for the travel of this system. I'm gonna snip off the excess here. End up at the top here, you'll see your connector that's attached to the motor. We're gonna go ahead and run a zip tie through there, offer this uh, some support. All right, next, I'm just going to go ahead and continue on zip tying this bundle just to make sure everything stays nice and uniform. All right, so now that completes the wire management portion. And as you can see, this machine is a monster. This thing's looking exceptional. We definitely have a lot more clearance here. This is actually set up for about eight and a half inches from the spoiler board. So this is very impressive. Like I said before, you can always adjust this. So if you wanna just mill out standard material, all you have to do is just loosen up your black angle corner connectors, your drop in T-nuts on the back, drop this system down, retighten it, and you can uh, do smaller material. But this thing is awesome. Okay, so that concludes the modification to the lead CNC. And as you can see, it came out great. This machine is now able to accept up to eight inches of material. It's super exciting. Can't wait to see some of the projects that you guys design. We're definitely gonna be working on some stuff ourselves. So make sure to stay tuned for future videos. Make sure to check out the Open Builds forum and dream it, build it, share it.